and implying that there is such a thing as criminal conspiracy. Thomas Jefferson says, I really look with commiseration over the great body of my fellow citizens who, reading newspapers, live and die in the belief that they have known something of what has been passing in their times. So as I'm saying, we have to start uh, gaining the symbolic literacy and begin to see through uh, you know, the veil of what's been going on. And Benjamin Disraeli, he was the first Hebrew prime minister of uh, England, a man who spent his whole life trying to expose these groups. He said that the government of this country has not only to deal with governments, kings and ministers, but also with secret societies, elements which must be taken into account, you see, which at the last moment can bring our plans to nothing, which can lead, which have agents everywhere who incite assassinations and can, if necessary, lead a massacre. And that is exactly what they have been doing. What year was that? I guess that was, uh, well, that's a good question, early 19th century? 19th century. It's probably oh, worse sorry, today. I'm, I'm sorry, early uh, 20th century. 20th century. Yeah, yeah, the turn of the century. And now we have the Internet with secret encryption codes. Mm -hmm. Well, here we have a, a wonderful statement way back in the 15th century by Sir Thomas Moore. And he says, Everywhere do I perceive a certain conspiracy of rich men seeking their own advantage under that name and pretext of the commonwealth. So these secret societies are thousands of years old, and the symbolism that they have is thousands of years old. So now we know who's doing what. Let's find out what they're doing. And we want to look a little bit, uh, at the beginning at least, of uh, the symbolism that permeates the uh, corporate world. And what I'd like to again reaffirm and make clear is that it has a lot to do with astrology. Astrology is the template behind a lot of the symbols that we see in daily life. I tell the children at the New Age Academy and other uh, youth that I uh, associate with in this subject to, instead of becoming cynical, I say to them, instead of becoming a cynic, be a critic. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than being cynical about your society, be a cynic. And the most important underlying common denominator is the night sky. Astrology and the night sky is where a lot of these symbols, these Sabian symbols, come from. For instance, we know about the constellations. We know that there is constellation of Leo and the constellation of Cancer, for instance. As I showed earlier, that has to do with heraldry. But these symbols, that's where they come from. The images that come out of the ancient world of the uh, 12 signs. And you see, there is actually more than 12 signs of the zodiac. There's actually 72 signs all together. If you, uh, over the sphere. Yeah, over the sphere. There's 72 major signs. And the advertising agents know all about the intricacy of these signs. Which is why when we see them, we don't necessarily at first think that they connect to planets. The Volvo symbol being the symbol of Mars, you see, re which represents the masculine. Mm -hmm. But see, the word Volvo is Scandinavian for the woman's vulva. So we have the female and the male being put together. The ring of Saturn with a triple A, uh, the ring of Saturn. Uh, we have Kron, K-R-O-N, which is a Bay Area channel. comes from the word Kronos, which means time. And if you actually look at the symbolism they use on that channel and that program, you will see a lot of interesting zodiological symbols there. Um, Arista, which is a record company, a massive conglomerate, is actually the ancient name of the star Spica in Virgo. Virgo. That relates to the sign of Virgo. The NATO symbol of the four directions of the four corners. You see, so um, people need to look at these innocuous symbols and discover that they have an ancient origin, and therefore they have a power. They have a, a power over our minds, over our consciousness. 